And welcome back to this live stream here. We are back to Dials, streaming the Colorado X-Wing Regionals 2017, live at Total Escape Games in Broomfield, Colorado. We are here at the top eight. Uh, we currently have, looks like, some Imperial and Imperial action uh, with uh, Steve versus Ryan. Uh, Asa, what are your thoughts on this match? Yep, so everybody, before we get started, uh, let's just introduce ourselves. Oh, I yeah. am Asa Graff, my co-host here, Adam Katnig, and we are casting the quarterfinals match from the top eight of the Total Escape Games Regionals. Indeed we, we do are. have some Imperial, Imperial action here on... Returning to the stream on the right side of your screen, Ryan Kraus with Tomox Bren, the Inquisitor, and Colonel Vessery. Crazy Eights. Crazy Eights indeed. And on the left, we have Steve Cotillo with Colonel Vessery, Countess Riyadh, and Deathfire here. Ooh. Indeed. So what have we got going on, Adam? Uh, so it looks like we've already started off the round here. Uh, Steve on the left uh, just went up with uh, the bomber. And... Uh, and he's debating a target lock from the sounds of it. Right, with because long with uh, range long scanners. range scanners. So that's how he's able to do that. It's an excellent addition, which really helps paint the targets for Vessery on your first engagement without having to deal with range control nearly as much. Indeed. It's nice, certainly from the get go. However, once you get up close, it is uh, a lot harder to do. So now we've got, uh, I believe that is, is that Colonel Vessery, that red one? The red one will be Countess Riyadh. The red one is Countess Riyadh. I apologize. So Countess Riyadh going up there. Uh, looks like a focus of eight. And then we have Colonel Vessery doing a two straight. Yep. Now, it's worth mentioning, Colonel Vessery does not have the TIE X7 title, which we see most of the time. Colonel Vessery has TIE D, Ion Cannon, and Crack Shot, which is far different from Ryan Krause's defenders, which would defender, which is Colonel Vessery with VI and the X7 title. Now, we see, saw how well Krause's defender performed earlier, so let's see if the Ion Cannon can claim a victim. Indeed. Looks like we got some uh, some of the crazy eights taken off here. Ooh, doing a fast maneuver down there. Uh, looks like that is uh, Colonel Vessery of Ryan's going fast down there. So in terms of opening deployments here, it's very interesting. Steve seems to have done a lot more sort of haphazard uh, deployment than Ryan. Maybe to get some better angles further down the road. I'm not sure. We'll see. Yes. It's interesting, too, how uh, Steve kind of uh, started in the center of the board. Uh, generally, I, I see kind of people starting on either one corner or the other. Um, more Mostly just to kind of go around the asteroids and make sort of a hallway to engage in combat. Uh, so now we've got um, more coming up on the right here. Yeah, so... Uh... Everybody's kind of coming in pretty fast. Um, Vessery on Steve's side is sort of hanging back, um, probably just to get that ion cannon firing. Indeed, indeed. Coming in fast and fast and hard here. Yep. Uh, so we're actually into the second round now. Folks are setting dials. Uh, once again, we are broadcasting from Total Escape Games here in Broomfield, Colorado. Uh, this is a collaboration between Back to Dials Podcast and Total Escape Games. Um, Adam, let's see, let's talk about these lists for just a moment while they're setting dials. The addition of the TIE Bombers is a very interesting thing that we see coming out of the Imperial Veterans Expansion Pack, Deathfire, and Tomox Bren. Indeed it is. Let's see, we've got the extra munitions there. Definitely want to be able to fire off as many munitions as possible. Try and get all those dice in with all these crazy different attacks you can do. Deathfire is also very interesting because he's he can place bombs super well, and he does in fact have a con or net or two on there. So hopefully Steve is hoping to get some uh, some some bombs off there, ionize those X7 defenders so they can't go very fast. It looks like we're uh, starting off the round here, doing a three straight forward from uh, Deathfire. Now I wonder what he what 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 action do you think he's going to take here? Well, it doesn't have long range scanners, unlike Ryan's. Uh, well, actually, no. This is the one with long range scanners. So he already has that homing missile uh, lock onto Colonel Vessery on the Ryan so on the like side of Ryan Krause. He's taking a barrel off to the side, probably setting up for a returning uh, three hard turn back into the fight. Set up for a good homing missile shot. Yeah, it looks like it, it doesn't quite want to get straight into those asteroids quite yet. 
uh, wants to kind of uh, loop around, uh, come back, and get some good shots in without having to brave the asteroids right away, just charge right in. More of a strategic thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> well put, Adam. Looks like uh, Steve's defenders are making a, like, setting up for another round, making a little bit of a feint out there. Right, yeah. They're, they're, instead of, it, it, this is interesting, because uh, usually you see kind of people try to just point their guns, you know, towards the enemy at all times, but here he's kind of pointing away, turning around, coming back. Right, one of the greatest utilities um, of the game is figuring out when it's when the time is right to faint when it's time to disengage come back around set up for another sh uh, for a better shot a couple turns later indeed looks like we're banking in slow here with the inquisitor the inquisitor's great you can just one bank check for a target lock if you don't have it you can boost and you can get your target lock and it's still a range one shot it's nasty i don't think i've ever played the inquisitor without the uh push the limit uh, included on there it's, it's just somewhat so of a staple it's it's so good just let you have you pretty much just do whatever you want <laughs> right we do indeed see the boost there and now it's the turn of colonel vessery inquisitor pushing the limit to focus or to get the target lock and the evade right we get that evade from the title the tie v1 title uh it states every time you take a target lock with the inquisitor you get a free evade token well you are you are assigned an evade right. token well, it's, you perform a free of eight action, oh, I that's, believe. I, that's I honestly can't remember off the top of my head. I, I know X7 is a sign, but I can't remember. I think it was an action because I remember, I think I remember playing one time and not being able to do it simply because I was stressed after. But you were assigned a target lock some other way? Yeah, it was, it was, it was something like that where I, I grabbed a target lock off of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're seeing here the utility of Ryan Krauss having all three of his ships at pilot skill 8. Uh, the Inquisitor here looks like it might be blocking a Colonel Vessery move next turn. Since they are, uh, Vessery's normally pilot skill 6, but since he's VI'd up to 8, Inquisitor can move first, paving that way uh, for Vessery to make an impact. Yes, this is a, a common tactic I, I've seen a lot where it's a lot of lists where you, you try to make all of the ships in the list the same pilot skill so you can move them in whatever order you move and attack in any order you choose. All right, so here comes shots. Shots, shots, shots. Inquisitor into Vessery. All right, looks like we got uh, two hits. Two hits in the box using his target lock. Oh, we add another. Right, now this isn't an um, X7 Defender, and since it is range 1, he's got getting the extra like got... spends of focus, but he only has two hits in there, so Vessery will take an early point of damage. All right, we got one damage onto Vessery. Uh, this is on to... Is this... Yeah, that's the Inquisitor firing into Colonel Vessery. So this is this, into Steve's Vessery. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> We're joined in the box by some soundproof foam, everybody. <laughs> All right, and we're back to dials. Um, it's interesting, really, because the, the, that target lock from Steve's death fire is sitting right on Ryan's Colonel Vessery. Yes, way in the rear. Now, I wonder if uh, Ryan wants to avoid that homing missile shot and doesn't actually go super f quickly forward with his own Colonel Vessery um, in order to try to stay out of range of that. Yes, he might end up uh, trying to uh, uh, take out Deathfire with uh, Inquisitor and Tomax first uh, to, to avoid that, that deathly, deathly shot. Indeed, and here so we go. it looks go. like here we go. We got Deathfire... Firing off with a three hard turn. There it is. Whee! That's that's what I imagine the, the, the pilots <laughs> make when they go like that. That's just the three hard turn noise. Whee! That really is. Does he barrel roll or just take the focus? Barrel roll. Barrel roll. Maybe. Well, it depends on what he wants to do next turn, right? If he wants to maybe set up for a, another pass and a Connor net then the barrel roll is probably a very solid option. And indeed, there it is. There it is. 
it would also if if he had not barrel rolled it would have greatly limited his uh the the, the movements he could have made uh in the next turn uh so now we see uh countess riyad uh taking uh taking advantage of her pilot ability doing oh a goodness. three k turns so good focus and evade which i believe is even green oh you bet oh, oh you yes. bet it's green adam you know you i've I'll use it on you several times oh i know <laughs> i know all too well then we have uh colonel vessery doing the standard four white k turn it's just it's just it's just almost doesn't yep. seem as good anymore. It's just there now. I'm so used <laughs> to seeing those defenders get their free evades, but not in this case because that's a tie D, sacrificing some of that defensive power for raw damage potential. Indeed. All right, and we've got the uh, Tomax coming up on the right. Wondering... Now, Tomax here, do you think he's in range of a shot, a homing missile shot on Riyadh? Well, so with the homing missile, that one requires range one, and from what I see... Home, no, homing missile is uh, oh. range three, range two to three. I'm thinking of proton oh, rockets. I'm thinking proton rockets. It's been a long day. It has been a long day. <laughs> it does. I, I, I would argue, yes, it looks like a range two to me from here. To Riyadh or to Deathfire? Because we're looking for Riyadh. Oh, to Riyadh. Right. He wants to use a homing missile against Countess Riyadh so that he can't. Uh, she can't use her evade tokens, but he instead takes a lock on death fire oh i'm looking at completely wrong ships <laughs> maybe awesome. he just he just okay. wants to get that bom those bombs off the board which i do not disagree with yeah whenever i see a ship full of ordnance i usually go for that one first uh, lots of ordnance can kill inquisitor banking into the right slightly here uh putting a target lock probably pu pushing the limit to focus is really piling on to that poor bomber. You think Vesser is going to go slowly as well to kind of stay here and out of range of uh, hit of Steve's Vesser and Riyadh? I, I would think so. He's either going to go... S oh, no! Oh, here we are. Looks like we're doing a three bank. I mean, he has that X7 title. He might Once as well again, take advantage whee! of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> X7 title. Um, doing a three bank. Getting right up into there. It looks like he might have range to get off those missiles. This is going to be a rough turn for Deathfire. It's going to be a rough, rough turn. Looks like we've got a laser. Going to check arc here. No rock. It is not through the asteroid. Yep, it is indeed range two. And here come, here comes the, the, the dice. From Colonel Vessery, of course, he gets a free target lock. Using that on the blank and then focusing for three hits. All right. And three and he hits takes go them through. All. Poor Deathfire. Yeah, that's a problem with bombers. I've run a list similar to this two defenders and Deathfire before, and while it has a lot of power and a lot of potential, those that that bomber it does have a huge target on its head, and it's it a lot easier indeed. to kill than those defenders. Oh yes, uh, all too well. Those that three green dice with the three red dice. Mm -hmm. That's. It's a lot of dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said, Adam, it is indeed a lot of dice. Inquisitor coming in uh, with the same, against the same target. Looks like, can't really see it, but it looks like three hits in the box there. Yeah, I've seen one uh, evade. three hits, so that one evade. Poor bomber has one hit point left looks after like taking got, two shots. Yes, one hit point left after two shots, and oof, what a round. Looks like we got range two from the bomber there, uh, from the... Uh, 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 Punisher to no. yeah, yeah, that's another Punisher. bomber. Yeah, from Tomox ah. <laughs> Bren, and the, the 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 harsh thing about this is even if uh, Steve rolls perfect evades, Ryan's got that crack shot, so one damage is gonna go through, and we see a dead oh, death and, fire. Yeah, it looks like uh, rolled one evade and he crack shot it away. Let's put both of them through. That's an early lead for ryan kraus uh poor steve poor death fire that's a that's a rough that's a rough thing because that uh that homing missile was going to be a great boon against those defenders and it doesn't even look like he's got return fire oof that is a rough first round now adam do you think that steve can come back from this 
Well, he does have two defenders, and I know all too well. <laughs> two defenders is a lot of defenders. Yeah, no, it's just, it's it's just a lot of defender. defender. <laughs> well put. <laughs> two defenders is better than one defender. Um, Not to mention we have the defender that has basically green K turns of almost any speed. Riyadh is a pain in the neck. In my opinion, in order to come back from this game... We really have to see Steve leveraging Colonel Vessery's ion cannon to yes. gain the positional advantage. It's... Because right now, Ryan has firepower on his side. Indeed. It's going to take some, some control here with that ion cannon to maybe ion a few ships, to point them where you want to go, to be able to maybe come around, get them from behind. So that uh, that, that is the one thing here. There are no turrets. There's no... Uh, sort of free shots where right. you, you'll get a shot no matter where they are around mm -hmm. ships. You, you, there there right. are arcs that can be dodged. Exactly. So as we go into the fourth round, I believe here, i uh, just like to remind you, my name's Asa Graff. I'm broadcasting with Adam Katning, my new co-host on the Back to Dials podcast, and we are coming to you live from Total Escape Games in Broomfield, Colorado, with the quarterfinals of the 2017 Colorado Star Wars X-Wing Regional Championships. Steve Cutillo has gone 4-2 today. Ryan Krauss is currently undefeated. And it's uh, after an early lead, it's interesting to see whether or not we think that Ryan will remain so. Countess Riyadh coming in with a 3 hard and Vessery banking in as well. Looks like they might try to put the hurt onto the opposing Vessery. Here they are coming back in to the asteroid field. It really makes you want a seismic torpedo. <laughs> God, I love those seismic torpedoes. They're so much fun. All right, it looks like we got uh, Tomax coming over here with a three bank. Perhaps anticipating a sort of move like that and understanding that a short maneuver is going to leave him open to attack. Right, if he can get out of the arcs there, then he may be able to dodge attack, kind of come around, and uh, put in some dice. An excellent maneuver, I believe. Let's see, it looks like he's still stuck at range one of... Uh, Countess Riyadh. Looks, Countess looks Riyadh. like he's, eye, he's eyeing those uh, angles, probably looking to see whether or not Countess, either Riyadh or Vessery has arc whether or not he has Arc on Vessery. Because uh, I might, in this case, if I have Arc on Vessery as Tomax Brown, might stick a target lock down, try to get those homing missiles off right away onto Colonel Vessery. Because remember, this is a quarterfinals elimination match. MOV no longer matters. So if you can just kill stuff, even at the cost of sacrificing Tomax Bren, uh, Vessery Inquisitor versus Riyadh is a tough game for Riyadh to come back from. Right, you are. And also, it's always a good idea to get off ordnance before you die. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. All Still right. eyeing those angles here. Where do you think uh, Ryan's Vessery is going, Adam? Um, well, it looks like... I, I Well, knowing... knowing. Oh, no, I'm thinking Riyadh again. Right. Vessery, uh, it looks like you might be able to fit in a 4K, like, like, like defenders like to do. Perhaps. Well, it looks but like... But then again, uh, one thing about being... Uh, a very good defender player is knowing when to and when not to do a 4k turn. Looks like this uh, is oh, wow. This is some phenomenal positioning on Ryan's part. Looks like he anticipated that three turn perfectly, laying in the target lock from Tomax Bren onto Steve's Countess Riyadh. Gonna pile in there. Remember that Inquisitor has proton rockets and is at a, in an excellent range one position. So those are the proton rockets we are looking for. Indeed. Let's get right up in there and fire those babies off onto Riyadh. And then Looks... we have a three bank with that Vessery into the other Vessery. <laughs> now Kith. <laughs> right now he's not getting fired at. I mean, that's that's a good one. Now he can, he can just Kate turn behind and be behind whatever defenders are left. That's right, and it looks like it's going to be a, a, a an easy K turn for Colonel Vessery uh, on Ryan's side, and uh, Steve's Vessery not so much because that rock looks like it's barely in the way from how I see it. But eh, we'll see. All right, so we've All got right. shots from Tomax Bren coming in against Countess Riyadh. Two hits at range one using the target lock, trying to get that three. He's got it. 
Three hits in the box. Countess Riyadh's defense dice coming in. Looks like... Ooh, not the paint we need to see. And, of Ooh. course, Ryan will crack that extra evade. Now, uh, which crack shots have already been used? I think it's... One uh, of them, but it comes back because it's Tomax Bren. Oh, that is correct. Mm -hmm. I have not flown Tomax yet. And there it is. We indeed see Ryan, the corner of Ryan's hand, flipping over crack shot and then flipping it right back up. And here comes the proton rocket shot. Ooh. Proton rockets. Here we go. Listen to all those dice. Well, bam. Spending the target lock to reroll those two. See if he can make the five. All right. Looks like we got four. Hit, hit, two crits. Oh, a bunch no. Of focuses. That is a dead Countess Riyad. Ooh. Tough luck there. But as Very they much say, so. the dice giveth and the dice taketh away. They do. That was extremely rough for Steve Cotillo. From what I thought was a an excellent opening position. Yeah. Uh, we've now seen Ryan gain both the positional advantage now and the firepower advantage after taking two ships off the board turn after turn. Oof. Rough, rough matches here. Now, Let's... Colonel Vester's going to be firing his ion cannon. Who's he firing at, Adam? Uh, it looks like they're checking art to see who. So it looks like he's going to be firing ion at the Inquisitor. No obstruction. Range two. And here are the dice. Ooh. Ooh. Very well. There's Got all a shot. three. No tokens needed. All right. We got Ooh. a single evade. That ion hits. Now that's rough. Now this this could be interesting. Steve could be in a very good position after this to actually put some serious hurt onto Ryan's Inquisitor. That is correct. He could be able to just fly right up and take the Inquisitor out. And here comes the tie D. Oh my goodness. Oh. Steve's dice on fire. Just raining hell down onto the Inquisitor. Who needs target locks anyways? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, and shields down on the Inquisitor. Now we're in an interesting position. Because Steve Cutillo's Vessery is still very alive. And Ryan's Inquisitor is limited to going one straightforward white, not clearing his stress. To which Steve could simply respond with a one bank. And a focus to get a nice range one kill shot on the Inquisitor because it won't have any actions because both stressed and ionized. Uh, if Steve is able to keep his Vessery relatively healthy while killing the uh, while killing the Inquisitor and then do that to the death fire on or to uh, Ryan Krause's Tomox Bren, now we have a very serious game simply because Colonel Vessery on Steve's side is more expensive than Colonel Vessery on Ryan's side. So Steve could win on time yes he could now it's going to be interesting to see uh if he can if he's able to uh oh interesting. Right. we're taking the one hard starting right away taking the one hard personally i would have thought about the one bank we've been instructed to do golf voices golf voices yes let's say how soft we can be yes and here comes the one straight ionization maneuver. It's going to bump into the back of Deathfire. Sorry, Tom Mox, Brent. I'll get those guys confused. Now, this Welcome is interesting. to my world. <laughs> it's very interesting that Steve did the one hard instead of the one bank. As now Ryan can bump into the back of Deathfire and I believe perhaps be out of that arc yes. of Colonel Vessery, which is a really rough turn of events for Steve. Uh, had he done the one bank, he would have been in a perfect position right there, range one next to the Inquisitor. Oh, and just on cue, we have uh, Ryan's Colonel Vessery doing the the all-famous 4K maneuver. <laughs> the patented 4K. Just missing the rock? Well, just hitting that debris field, actually. Did it hit? Mm -hmm. Oh, it did hit. That's he where he got the stress. stress uh, but getting the evade from the X7 title. All right, and he did not roll a critical damage, so he does not take any damage from it. All right. 
got Tomax Brian. The going. long 5K. Whee! A long 5K. Turn around. Takes a stress to see if these two ships can take out uh, Steve's Colonel Vessery. I think the deciding factor here will be, and we can't really see from here, whether or not Steve's Colonel Vessery has Ark on Ryan's Inquisitor. Yes, that could be a game changer. Looks moment. like looks like he thought that the uh, ionization maneuver would go just a hair further than it actually did. All right. So we just had a failed two dice attack there. All right, we're doing Vessery on Vessery here. Unmodified. He As does have Juke. All he has is Juke. Juke might be all he needs. So he's got, got two some good dice. And three Oh, there's dice. some good dice. Juke will not help you here. <laughs> now, do we have Ark on that Inquisitor? We do not. Ah, that's very rough. That one that one hard turn really hosed him there. Yes. So now the Inquisitor is free to do Inquisitor things. Steve's Colonel Vessery is stressed and won't get that all-important defensive focus that right. he might need to stay in this game. And it's it's a shame that this wasn't count as Riyadh, because she could just do a, a, a green, green 5K. 5K turn. Oh, yes. Because why not? Because Countess Riyadh is amazing. Dials are coming down. We're broadcasting to you from Total Escape Games here in Broomfield, Colorado. This is the quarterfinals of the 2017 Star Wars X-Wing Regional Tournaments. We are in the top eight here. Mm-hmm. Adam, now, do you, do you really think that there's any way that Steve can come back from this? Well, uh, it's going to take some lucky dice, maybe some careful maneuvering. Ma 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 <laughs> uh, hopefully he's better with maneuvers than I am at talking. <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, but he is a rather limited to this 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 next move here as with that stress. Uh, it's it's, it's going to take a green to remove, or maybe some risky white turns. Uh, just just putting all faith into the dice. Yep. Well, we shall see. Here right, he let's goes. See. He is doing a white 4K maneuver, keeping the stress. And here is this. Here's these these whiskey ri ri Blah. These risky white maneuvers does not clear the stress. Now, part of me thinks this is the right call. Sometimes when you're behind, you have to make risky Hail Mary maneuvers. Um, we saw this earlier in, I believe, the fifth round uh, where a defender list lost because the opponent wasn't necessarily willing to make the risky maneuver. Right. Just trying to maybe maybe stay on the board till time or something like that. Just win by MOV. Um, so it looks like we did a slow and go here and barrel rolling over. Try and get that uh, shot in while dodging the arc there. Good maneuver by Ryan Krause's Tomat Bren. All right, doing a three bank here. And I believe... I forget. Is that green on a defender style? Not without the Mark II engines. That's right. Which Ryan's Colonel Vessery does not have. So, but he does get the evade token for Juke, and the Inquisitor will be happy to lay in a target lock for him. Correct. All right. Looks like we've got the Inquisitor doing a one bank to clear his stress. Ooh, just did a 360 on the way. <laughs> a quick little one sloop there. I believe that uh, removes uh, enemy target locks from your ship. I think it. Re uh, yeah, I think it just <laughs> wins you the game. Oh, oh, oh! Well, then why are we even here still? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got some target locks. Uh, push to focus. And now Ryan's gonna take some shots on Steve's Vessery. All right, so we've got Tomax doing the first attack here. It is range one. Oof. Let's see if Colonel Vessery can pull this off on dice alone. We've got... See at least one crit. Crit. I'm not seeing any evades. I'm not seeing any either. One we... shield down. And Colonel Vessery is on hull. All right, now we've got Vessery on Vessery. I suppose, uh, Pilot Skull 8 Vessery on Pilot Skull 6. Looks like we got two hits and a focus. 
Now Steve's Colonel Vester, of course, gets a free target lock, which he's then going to use. Into three hits. And that's not nearly enough evades to keep Colonel Vessery alive for Steve. And I do believe that he's almost down. He's got one hull left. And we've got no shot on the Inquisitor, so he will survive for one more round. Shots on the Inquisitor, two hits. And this is from the Ion Cannon. So we've got two for Ion. And, of course, the Inquisitor and the Inquisitor's green dice. Scoff at the Ion Cannon. <laughs> Indeed. And there's the Tide D primary. All right. So it looks like we got a hit crit from the primary. And spend spending the focus to take nothing. Indeed. No, I think we just I think we just see here uh, where Steve didn't quite capitalize on the momentary advantage that he got after he hit the Inquisitor with the Ion Cannon. Um, and he's really paying dearly for that, I believe. Those uh, those amazing ace ships on Ryan Krauss' side uh, just running circles around Steve's Colonel Vessery. Yeah, let's see. Uh, it's going to take some careful maneuvering to... I think that maybe the only chance he's got here is to try and dodge at least two of these arcs, but I'm not sure how he's going to pull that off, especially while being stressed. Right. And if we have some newer players in the stream who haven't played against a Colonel Vessery before, uh, the reason why he's so good is because Colonel Vessery gets a free target lock immediately after rolling dice when attacking an opponent that you have already target locked. If they have a red target lock token, you get a free target lock basically to use on your attack. So Colonel Vessery has an amazingly consistent gun. It's yes, it's it's basically free rerolls all the time. <laughs> and in this case with the Tide D title, he gets uh two shots with that ion cannon. At least on Steve's he gets a shot with the ion cannon and then which is target locked and then a shot with his primary, which is target locks, of course, assuming that there is a second ship on the board that is painting the target for Vessery, which in Steve's case unfortunately is not true all right looks like we're doing a two straight here to uh clear that stress run straight into the inquisitor bam or boop whichever <laughs> you prefer <laughs> i mean i think that's one of the things we got to do we got to clear the stress get close to vestry so you can get those ion tie d shots oh -ho. it looks like we have another collision here uh, we've got Tomax against uh, Vessery here. And with that, uh, we'll have to see what the Inquisitor has in store for us here, but he may. That, that's, one, that's one shot he won't have to take uh, since we've got Tomax against Vessery there. Um, he, he will not be taking shots as they cannot fire upon each other. And really the only way that uh, Steve can pull some victory out here um, is by not letting himself get shot while taking the while taking shots on the enemy. Now, of course, that seems basic. Right. Right. And That's basic tenets of X-Wing 101. But it be can be quite difficult to pull off in practice, especially when you are in a situation like this. Right. When you have three enemy ships to deal with, you haven't really done much appreciable damage to them. And now we have the Inquisitor running away. <laughs> oh, he's coming back in for another pass, if necessary. Oh, I'm sure it is. But for now, it looks like it's just getting out of the fight. Uh, it did not turn around. Uh, ran over there. And it looks like he is uh, pushing the limit roll. here to take a barrel roll. As to uh, not fly off the board next round. <laughs> Perhaps anticipating a, one, a white 4K next round from Steve's Colonel Vessery, getting into a good position to head that off. All right, let's see where Ryan's Colonel Vessery is going. It looks like... Uh, Speaking of white 4Ks. Ooh, right on to... Is that, is that a debris or that a is a debris. That is a debris. Okay. I 100% agree with that. You still get your shot. It's range one. It's target locked because the Inquisitor's got the target painted. You have your X7 evade, which enables Juke. And uh, you no. are you get stressed, but who really cares? He's only got one haul left. You just want to end right. this and no, game. No damage from that debris either. 
All right, we've got a range one shot. Looks three like target he's lock. spending the target lock. Uh, looks like we got three. And we need... And that is the end. Yep. Ryan Kraus, everybody, remains undefeated after a 100-0 win over Steve Cutillo here in the quarterfinals of the Star Wars X-Wing Regional Championships in Denver, Colorado. There's a few minutes remaining on the other tables, um, so we will be back shortly with the next round with the semifinals of the regional championships. But until then, I'm Asa Graf, and I'm joined with uh, by Adam Katnig. And I'm Adam Katnig. Yeah, I was going to say that. Woo! <laughs> and we'll see you guys again in just a couple of minutes.